Hey, I am back and uh, going to make a cut with the wall hopper head in this old horizontal milling machine with a with a vertical head attachment. And uh, I want to I, I noticed in my last video that I've got a black eye. And I know I wasn't uh, fight behind the brass monkey downtown or wherever that place was. Uh, I was chasing uh, Chloe through the woods and uh, I ran into a branch. So I heal up pretty quick. So that'll go away. <laughs> okay, let's have a quick look here. I'll get you up close. <clears throat> and kind of low I think would be good. Got a lot of uh, adjustments here. Bear with me. It's a very tight area in here, you know. Okay, let's get up here and see. Uh, maybe better from over here. And I'll try to lean this thing over a little bit here. Oh, this is tough, I'll tell you. And it's a very tight area, see? Okay. I can get to the crank handles. I think we can do it here. Okay. Now, I got the uh, back plate for that uh, lathe chuck in here. I'm going to take a facing cut across it. And uh, I trim the head to uh, the table. And, of course, you know, you put a piece of work in. Uh, and I got it trimmed here, too. And I was able to get it in tram by uh, slipping an adjustable parallel under this one here. I'm just fiddling with it. And, you know, uh, you don't want to get stuff too tight. And sometimes clamps can fool you a little bit. So you want to grab it and see if you can jerk it out of the machine. I can't do that. So um, that's good. So let's get this thing out. Okay. Set it over here. Okay. Now I'm going to, the tool's right here, and I'm going to crank this back. Okay. And I got it just about in the middle of the work there. And I'm going to get down here, and I'm going to lift the table up here. And just get that to uh, touch. Just touch the work. Getting close. Down a little bit. Up. That's it. Real nice. Okay. You're just scratching. Okay. Back it off. So the tool's just inside the work. Now, I just lined the head up with the tool. I didn't, you know, you really don't need to, uh, if you're facing something, to use a dial indicator. So I just got the head just inside. Okay. And uh, I'm going to give it the same cut that I did on the jig bore. And that was uh, uh, a one and a half thousandths feet. And uh, so I'll push one. That's a half thousandth. Sometimes I lose count on these. I think I did uh, on the last one. So if I, if I push three of them in, that's um, one and a half thousandths. Now I'm going to get that, uh, that pin back into that. So if, if it overloads, the pin pushes up. And then... Uh, then it spins like that. See, and the collar spins. So when the pin's in the slot, like that, and you hold, and the rod's in here, you see the collar stationary. Okay, let's get it over there. Okay, I've got the stop rod there. Looking good here. Now I'm going to feed it. Um, before it was three and a half thousandths, two, three and a half. That should clean that up good. I got everything locked. Looking good. Got it all in gear this time. Okay. 
Now I'm going to hold this pin in. I'm going to have my hand here during this cut because uh, the head's a little bit cold and sometimes it wants to uh, release. So I'm going to start it and we'll start cutting. How are we looking on the camera? I think you can see everything. I'm just going to put just a little bit of that lube on there. It keeps that, uh, that cast from kind of flying around. It'll kind of ball up more. Okay. Here we go. Ah, it's starting to cut already. You know, that is looking pretty good. It's a good finish. Um, the uh, the spindle bearings in this vertical head are uh, Temkin, and uh, I've been adjusting them, and it's looking pretty good. You know, slowly uh, bringing them uh, to a load on. So I'm quite happy with what I'm seeing here. I hope you can see that okay. Got just about a half inch to go. This old machine with uh, uh, all those gears and that chain drives remarkably smooth. Let's get a close look at that and I can tell you a few things about the uh, this is the one I need right here now an interesting thing let me get this between gears again now interesting thing about a wall hopper head is um, when it's cutting out this way the the force of the tool pushes the slide up a little more you know what I mean? It pushes the slide up more than if the edge was right here. So as the tool feeds up, feeds out, the forces push up on this and it gives it a very slight concave to it. You know, it might be one ten thousandths of an inch from the inside to here. We can check that. But uh, I wanted to point that out because it's very important uh, when you're facing a flange or something that it has a slight concave. And then if it has to be perfectly flat, it'll be a lot easier to lap it if it's slightly concave than convex, which is a bummer. <laughs> concave you can deal with, con convex is harder to deal with. So uh, that's how this head uh, does a really ideal finish for something like this, you know. And if you fly cut it, you don't get that. And you get other weird things with fly cutting. So this is the best way to face something. The lathe or like this. Now on lathes, um, like the Monarch 10 E, 
You, it, they all cut slight concave, and they have to. It's important, like I told you, to lap things in. Um, and you can actually specify how much on a Monarch 10 double E, and it probably costs 10,000 bucks for them to uh, meet that specification for you. Uh, this uh, lathe behind me here, this one I have, uh, has that specification uh, when it was uh, um, ordered by um, Western Electric uh, Missile Guidance Systems. So uh, I just thought I'd point that out on how these work. And I tell you, I am just totally thrilled. That finish is good. It's great. Look at that. Yeah, I'm real happy. And this old milling machine's a jewel. So uh, I'm going to kick this around a little bit more. But uh, I'm going to end up doing this again in the jig boring machine just because it's easier. Okay, I'm going to load this video and then um, I'm going to do a little bit more on fitting these chucks. Okay, and I'll be back. Thanks. Thanks again. Bye-bye.